Hi, I'm Amberly. Welcome back to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back. Here right now with Zona Starnes, uh, part of Hammers and Hearts. If you've seen some of our past episodes, we interviewed Gabe Tischler, who is with Catholic Charities, part of this massive relief effort. Um, lots of rain. Uh, simply put, lots of rain started around the 4th of July, and six weeks later, Washington County found itself in a state of emergency for the second time. Uh, a lot of people uh, put out of their homes, a lot of roads impassable, a lot of expense to the county and to individuals. Uh, Zona is part of a group, Hammers and Hearts, which has come to Washington County uh, to help some of the folks, uh, such as those seen behind us right now. Zona, where is your home? Um, we're from Conover, North Carolina. Wow, so uh, how many in your group here? We have 13. We have two ladies that stay back and cook, and then we have 11 that's working on the houses. And you all came from North Carolina? Yes, we did. We're from St. John's Lutheran Church in Conover, North Carolina. Well, you know, we sort of had our eyes open when we spoke to Gabe Tischler from Catholic Charities, and he explained how this process works. But until you actually come to a job site such as this and see you guys, um, it's like ants on a chicken bone. You guys are working all over the place. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the owner? Um, the owner is Gordon and Claire Nell. I'm not sure okay. what their last name is. And as mentioned, we're here in Chipley, Florida, not far from the, uh, the uh, uh, county courthouse annex. So we're right here basically in downtown Chipley. Many people don't realize that um, the damage, uh, for lack of a better word, was not contained just around the areas that flooded, but rather some of them still here uh, where we're high and dry, and these folks experienced some of that damage. Um, what kind of help are you giving these people? What kind of construction is this uh, house actually in, in need of right now, Zona? Um, well, when we got here on Tuesday, or Wednesday, we worked on another house for two days. So we got, our first day here was um, Friday. And we started, it was completely gutted with two by fours uh, only standing, and we started sheetrocking. So we've been putting up sheetrock, uh, ceiling, and the walls. We've been mudding and sanding. And so, and we had uh, two of our guys too. One of the guys used to do cabinets, he's retired. Um, Tim Gabler, he did the cabinets, and he had an assistant, Josh. So the first house that you say that you worked on, was that the one that was off of Pioneer Road down at uh, yes. Wausau and Vernon? Yes, we did a metal roof on that house, repaired part of the roof before we put the metal on, and did a whole ceiling, repaired the whole ceiling uh, in one of the bedrooms and half of the bathroom and half of the washroom. We were hoping to make it to that location and be able to speak to some of you. Um, we had some bad communication between Gabe and, and myself and Forrest Smith, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're glad that we tracked you down today. We're gonna take a look uh, at this house and maybe Zona will explain the before and the after because we don't have any of the before pictures, but we can certainly take a look at it. Um, but for, before we do that, talk a little bit about um, the areas that you've visited here recently um, providing these services. Okay, um, we came down last spring, I believe it was in April, and we put on a metal roof. That roof um, took us like three days and uh, we put on a metal roof there and um, then we did some more sheetrock and we went to another lady's house and sheetrocked her whole house. And uh, after we got the sheetrock done there, we went to another lady's house and sheetrocked her house and painted her whole entire house. Now, in what parts of the area, uh, what, what area were those homes? That in? was uh, Live Oaks. Okay. So you're getting quite a tour of Florida, of yes, North we are. Florida. Yeah, it's nice here. Um, obviously, Disaster to disaster to disaster. Mm -hmm. um, you've got um, the, the, uh, the, the hurricane in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. You've got the tornadoes in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. You've got what we now have had flooding in Florida and other parts of the country. Colorado experiencing flooding here just recently. Mm -hmm. um, pretty amazing stuff. FEMA is basically out of business. They're not writing the blank checks like they used to, certainly. And that's not a bad thing. I don't yeah. think that the federal government should probably be in that business. I think we're better off doing what's basically a bootstraps effort, which is what you're doing, helping people, giving them a hand up, not necessarily a hand out. Uh, you could write these people a check, but they would still be in the same boat. They'd have a little bit of money, but no way to fix it. Right. This is pretty compelling stuff. Um, it, and it's a mission. It's a uh, 
a ministry unto itself, obviously. Um, do you get an opportunity to speak to people along the way um, uh, about uh, oh, yes. uh, your faith uh, yes. as part of this effort? Oh, yes, we do, everywhere we go. And surprisingly, too, they speak to us about their faith. It's unfortunate, but usually when we have our roughest times is when, yeah. we, when we learn to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, do you feel that going forward, that after a job such as this, that you've done more uh, impact to these people than just put a roof on their house? Um, well, from my experiences, we've, from the places we've been, we were in um, New Orleans seven times after Katrina. And the people there were just very grateful. And they didn't understand why we came so far to help them. But we get more than we give out of these jobs. And we, we learn a lot about the people in the different states that we work in. We were in Missouri after that um, tornado up there. We were in Alabama twice after the t tornadoes there. And we just, we get more, and, and God just drives us to do this. This comes from, you know, this is just a, um, it's, a comp it's a passion that we have, and we just feel like this is something that we can give and, and receive and show people that, you know, God sends us to do these things, and we enjoy it, and we work good as a team. How can you afford to do this? Obviously, um, if you're here doing this, you're not working a regular job. Uh, what finances your operation? Well, we do fundraisers. Um, our church, church St. John's does fundraisers. We have a trailer set up to make sandwiches and we go to auctions, we go to sports events, we go to car shows, tractor shows, and we sell sandwiches and drinks and set up when we raise our own money. And uh, we have teams that go to Russia for a vacation Bible school. We have teams that go to Alaska to the villages and they teach um, vacation Bible school to the children there. So this is basically a double whammy for you. You work your tail off earning money to be able to come and work your tail off somewhere else. Uh, and as you point out, it's, it's a blessing to you as it well. Is. It is. It's a blessing. We get more than we give. And, and I like that. Um, that. That's a great way to say it. You get more than you give. Um, if somebody wants to get involved in Hammers and Hearts, what's the best way for them to find out more uh, information? Um, Hammer and Hearts has a website that you can go to and they're on Facebook. Just type it in and you can go straight to it and like it and, and you can be on Facebook or you can go to their website and they have opportunities there that you can donate or get more information if you want to help. So if you uh, do want more information, you can Google Hammer and Hearts. Um, and again, as Zona points out, you can find their website. Um, but I would think that the Facebook page would probably be as much, if not more, compelling uh, mm -hmm. because there's probably lots of photos and mm -hmm. video clips. We're actually going to um, contribute what we're doing here today with you um, to your group so that you can put that on Facebook if you would like to well, and on you. your website. We will. And what is the financial status or the, the social standing of the people that own the home? What, what's your insight into their, their, their situation? The owners of the home, Gordon and Claire Nell, said that they've been working on this home since 2005. They have been doing it themselves and what with little help they've had from their friends and uh, the community. But um, I know they're low on funds because um, Gordon told us yesterday to get all the sheetrock that we needed and the mud and the rest of the insulation to do this home. He had to withdraw everything that was left in their account. So is he actually paying for the materials? Uh, yes, and if anybody wants to donate, that would be great. Is there some kind of a local effort to, to help uh, these particular people? Well, I, I know Hammer and Hearts have a little bit of funds, and then we post we posted on our, um, our Facebook website for St. John's Lutheran Church in Conover if anybody wanted to donate. So I know some of that money's come in. Now, were these people actually living in this home in that substandard condition? No, they've been renting a home and um, been working on this house on the side. Uh, again, if you'd like to get involved, uh, just Google Hammer and Hearts. Uh, you'll be able to find their Facebook page or their website. Get involved. Uh, as Zona points out, you get more than you give in these kinds of uh, conditions. We're going to be taking a, a tour around the county, visiting some of the other sites that Zona and her crew, along with some of the other folks who are here from Hammer and Hearts, as well as other organizations, um, are working on uh, and are trying to help people. Forrest Smith uh, and Gabe Tischler, both who have been on the show before, uh, great people, the local contacts, and uh, if you want to find out more, you can certainly contact them as well. We'll be right back.